Break the walls down. Hello, everyone. It's Cybernation Uncensored. I am Will, the lore keeper for Arclight Court, but tonight I am the presence here at Masquerade of the Mighty, a Masks, a New Generation live play. Join with me tonight are three of four of our wonderful heroes. Uh, one of us could not make it here tonight. We send them nothing but love, nothing but adoration, nothing but the sincerest hopes to see them in the next session. We will now circle around our cast and have everyone introduce themselves, where we can find them, and what character they are playing. We will start with Jules. Hello, everybody. Adam Joseph Ferry here. And I am playing Jules Graysbach, scientist, genius extraordinaire. Um, you could find me uh, on my Twitch channel of Adam Turns Heel, uh, where I'm playing all sorts of mystery games, Famicom Detective Club, um, the Ace Attorney games, and Legend of Zelda. You will also find me on the bowling lanes, and I bit the bullet and decided to help the noble people ship out their gifts for Christmas this year, because I just recently got hired by UPS. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> Up next, Galaxia. Hello. I am your magical bitch made of star stuff, Coral. Uh, Galaxia, also known as Coral. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a trans variety streamer over here on the Twitches. We play whatever the fuck we get obsessed with at the time. At the moment, that is Crusader Kings 3, also known as Total Drama Simulator Medieval Europe. Um, oh, yeah, baby. My mom died in childbirth, and I inherited an empire at the age of one. It was a blast. <laughs> what? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Queer Venture Time. And uh, I am so excited to get back to this group. I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> and last but certainly not least, our wonderful tech advisor for the evening, as well as the wonderful Prism. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm ELH, uh, ELHMK1 on Twitch and YouTube. I am no longer on Twitter, but you now can find me on Mastodon at ELH at Tabletop Social. As said, I will be running Tech tonight, but I will also be playing a Prism, the transformed individual who uh, likes getting paint thrown on him, apparently. And what was what was food we had? I do not remember. What was the name of food? It was some kind of taco or soft shell or something? The jackfruit sweet, uh, jackfruit. the jackfruit street tacos. That's what it was. Yes, that poisonous food. I swear, I'm now having like six of them every day. It is, it is curse. <laughs> and once again, I am Will, also known as the presence here for Masquerade of the Mighty, a masks a new generation live play here on Cybernation Uncensored. And with that, we will jump into tonight's game. To begin, issue two, Masquerade the Mighty. The title shows the name Howls and Echoes. On the front, we can see a large canine-like face from the left side, mouth snarling open with what looks to be like blood and saliva dripping from it. And across from it, a speaker with sound waves moving off of it, almost as if there's a face-off between the two to a blank white background. As we open the cover, we come to page one, two side-by-side -side panels showing two very different situations. One, a humanoid-like figure in a black jumpsuit, serial numbers across the front, with a almost metallic face covering being led by two all black armored paramilitary appearing people, almost as if in prisoner transport, walking them down a hallway coming towards the reader. The panel to the right of it, we see another humanoid figure in all black. These, uh, pauldrons, these shoulder armored pieces almost look like they're mirroring uh, uh, glass with black under 
uh, uh, undertones to it, moving like mercury, uh, uh, pulled in almost trench coat underneath it. You see the person removing a black helmet from their head, walking away from the reader. So we turn the page again. We see the first person being led to a cell. The doors, metallic, sheened, sterile, push in and slide open as the one with the metal mask over their face gets escorted, albeit aggressively, into the holding area. As they stumble into this concrete-like area, you see a benched-off portion to the far back with what looks to be a pillow and a few folded blankets over the top of it. A sink to the right with a toilet next to it. And other than that, bare and empty. As the person moves to take a seat onto the bench, you see whirls and clicking happening to the metal around the faceplate of the mask as it suddenly comes undone and falls. The person where a nose would be, there isn't. Just large, vacuous, dark holes that lead into the skull. And an almost canine-like jowl coming from the front as a sneer moves across their face. And you see a small bit of text. So now... We play. The next panel shows our three heroes here. As you have all reconvened back at the Lab Sanctorum, the uh, headquarters of your guys' hero, heroic escapades, points of scientific discovery and invention, shortly after having performed the surgeries on the bystanders of your masquerade um, as the golden sentinels returned to their own medical bays in order to have the similar surgeries conducted on them within the chamber that your friend flux was resting in you can see there is still a lockdown procedure on the panel, the the uh, entrance panel where a code would be entered to allow people to move back and forth between with a timer on the bottom that shows 48 hours starting to count down. Uh, Jules, ELH, and uh, Jules, Prism, and Galaxia uh, you all know this to be almost like a standard protocol for the energy that's been released from Flux as not just a safety precaution for everyone else, but for Flux themselves. If exposed to the battery cells that were charged from the energy she displaced and removed from herself, she would just as quickly reabsorb it. So this is allowing the chamber to siphon and cycle through the energy in order to better provide it to the rest of the lab and not put her or put them in a situation where they might reabsorb all of that hazardous energy. And this is where we find the three of you. What would you like to do? So I know uh, I just want to real quick go over what we did last session right there at the end. And I want to make sure my memory's right on this. So I recall that Prism uh, basically was able to use their transforming crystalline body to make a micro, macroscopic, whatever the word is, to get a look at what were nanomachines. Um, yes. Is it still possible for me to have a sample of those nanomachines? Yes, you guys do still have like the various samples from each one of the, uh, for lack of a better term, victims of the events that transpired and they were separated by each individual person and whose powers they were mimicking. In that case, and if you'll allow me a little bit of creative freedom here, what I'd like to do is go over to a device, which is basically a camera mounted on a electron microscope so that I can show it to Jules and Galaxy easily. And I just want to sort of put a, you know, just a small bit of droplet of the nanomachines. And I start pointing out 
Well, this one here uh, looks like, you know, standard nanomachine from today, but this one here, this is easily 200, 300, 400 years far past what we have, and this one looks, I, frankly, Galaxy, if you don't mind me saying so, this one looks alien. This, I don't recognize this design at all. And I'm assuming one of the other ones looked like they were from the past. Yes, that was the strangest thing, is that the earliest nanomachine here does not... And you might have to correct me on this one, Arclight. This one looks um, almost like from an alternate timeline. It, it has some markings, what you would have of normal nanomachines, at least in our history, but it looks just a bit different. Yeah, there looks to be almost like a steampunk or like aether punk like flair to it there's more cog work than there is like biomechanical interactions within it but even that one as you're speaking about it you can see it start it looks like it's continuing the job that it was supposed to do but the form starts to become more modern and like moving away from the appearance of that steampunk-esque appearance as if it's adapting to this world. Yes. I can't say I've ever any, seen anything like this before. Hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> I mean, I have to say that, you know, we, 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 of course, know all about this, but, um, I... <laughs> don't necessarily um we'll just say that this isn't necessarily my area of expertise but from what i do know don't they usually all have to like like they 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 it's like an army right and they all have to be like usually they're all the same to and work together like that like how do we is, how are they working together when they're so different? It's a very good question. I mean, you're that's a very good analogy, by the way. You simplified that very well. You would make for a good teacher. Um honestly, I'm not sure. Um Dr. Graysbark, any any thoughts? Well my knowledge of nanotechnology is slightly in uh well nanotechnology nanotechnology in general is still highly experimental for the most part but the general theory is that they are able to adapt to the to most environments but if one's from the future i've never heard of nanotechnology adapting backwards to a today's world as it were or i mean maybe to an alternate universe well, alternate universe theories are, are even theoretical. This is most of this is still well beyond anything I've ever seen. But I look, I I look a little bit closer at the steampunk. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll just call them the steam steampunk nano genes, and no worries um, about that. Love that. <laughs> and just I notice them adapting, and see but if i look close enough i could probably see where exactly they're trying uh exactly that they came from which all universe that they possibly came from or what happened in this universe give me an assess the situation okay that would be 2d6 plus superior see that Oh, and then while while Jules is um is examining this, y'all just see Galaxia like go, <gasps> and then she's just like sitting there like and like um just little star bits like just start like floating off of her you, like she's steaming. She's just really excited. She had an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, my superior. T um, or my superior was um or a situation was a ten. Was a ten. Yes. Awesome. Um, you will get an additional 
question. You did take the scientific insight skill. Am I correct? I did. Let me just. Yes, you did. My character I did. Um, because this will pertain to your field of science and technology. Mm -hmm. So with a 10, you will uh, successfully get to ask any three questions. One of them does have to do with your field of expertise in science. Okay. So I have one from the future. Um, one that's alien. Would you like a uh, comment from the peanut gallery? I would like a comment from the peanut gallery. <laughs> I personally would like to know if the alien and the advanced ones are going backwards or if the steampunk ones are just going to modern. Basically, are they going to modern and staying there or are they advancing towards the advanced ones, if you see what I'm saying? I yeah. see, yes. Even though they are alien, can I, would I be able to tell that they are of all time? So the ones that appear to be further ahead, at least scientifically and by design, um, could be perceived as alien, but looking closer at them, this is still on par with things that would be capable on Earth themselves. Um, combining with that, uh, going with the peanut gallery's idea here, um, those ones are moving backwards in design and appearance as the steampunk genobots do appear to be moving forward, but they're not moving forward and stopping at modern. They continue past to the more advanced ones and the more advanced ones seem to be going back and going past modern towards those Victorian genobots. Like they're in a perpetual flux of motion. No wonder. Um, would that continual no offense to flux, but with that continuing mm. flux, um, would I would that continual flux be a reason for the insta instability instability of? Yes, it absolutely is an attributing factor to the instability because the ones who are going, the ones going backwards to the Victorian genobots, eventually disintegrate to nothing but microscopic traces of these microscopic things. And the ones moving forward get to the far furthest advanced point that it can, and then no longer exist. Oh. Like you're observing them, and then in the same moment you're observing them, you're watching them cease to exist. So... One more question. Would that be? Hmm. If you'd like, I, I've i got a question. I will yield. <laughs> um, so, like, you know that, uh, so, so, like, an army needs a commander, right? Like, and if nanobots act as, like, you know, a school of fish or whatever like you know a flock of birds what have you like there's like they're they are getting cues from somewhere right is there any way to tell like if there's a if there's if there's i think you know uh i think um uh prism and i were getting kind of at the same idea of like is there one design that they're all going towards but that's not how it's working is there one giving the orders i don't know those are my those are the thoughts well they're trying Feel to adapt to, to each other yeah them. so they they are adapting to each other and constantly fluctuating um between old and new 
so much so that after a while they blip out of existence. That's the really interesting bit for me now. And it's still at a speed that microseconds. Um, the the blipping is the transmorphing forward and backward is at a pace that can be witnessed by by, the... by your perception of time. So it's not in a second shifting through all of these time periods and then gone. It takes minutes for it to get all the way to the end of one spectrum or the other. Mm. Mm. Do these fluctuations seem like they're being controlled? There is one. Looking over all of the ones that are making passage through time in their design, there is one that is not changing at all, is stable. It seems slightly ahead of the theoretical of the modern day, as if this is the, this is the Bentley of nanobots. <clears throat> Once they were rolled out, this is what the top of the line would get you. And that one seems to be staying exactly the same and radiating and giving off some kind of transmission or signal. But you do identify that one. That's the one I'm looking at the most. Um... <clears throat> Currently with this line of thought, and the ideas that have presented themselves to you. Watching these other ones move through time, yes, extraordinary. Opens up theories and ideas about time travel, the alternate realities, uh, mechanics, the capability of biomechanizations uh, and everything like that. This one has now pinpointed. The rest of that is theoretical, this is practical. This exists. This is here. I will attempt to... If they're in a test tube, um, I'll see what happens if I can just... If I have any lead, I will attempt to like disrupt the signal if I can. Okay. By putting some, some form of lead block we in, will... in its way. Count this as an unleash your powers. This is yes. an immediate adaptation of your scientific awareness and your brilliance uh, to this specific situation. Okay. So that would be 2d6. Is that? Yep. That see. is a roll plus freak. You do have always prepared. Yes. And you are I... back within your lab, so I won't get I won't hold you to the only two gadgets of the skill. So you'll make the role plus superior instead of uh freak. The freak. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um that's a nine. Alrighty. Um, you won't mark a condition, but I will describe the situation for you. Okay. As you find a, uh, like a lead isotope that you do have available here, something that you've kept on hand in case of maybe making a, 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 uh, almost like a barrier for flux in some way, shape, or form, yes. to massive energy spikes or things of that nature. You have a sample of this isotope in an attempt to make like an, like an armor or something of that nature. By taking that, having uh, Malin drill or, or laser almost a perfectly microscopic hole through the center of it to isolate that one nanobot. You move it over set over the top of it 
in the electron microscope visual that prism and galaxia have you see there are no longer waves coming from this singular nanobot and the rest seem to go inert some in mid transition through time in their uh, trans uh, their transformations and you watch them start to pop inside there giving way like without the without any kind of guidance without any kind of uh, 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 leadership or or design set in place for them to follow, no road for them to be on. It is almost a self-destruct sequence for each one going off. Malin, take it out, take it out, take it out. The one that you were testing this on remains, but is now inert. The others within are no longer visually capable of being seen either through their own self-destruct means or that time displacement. That was, Fascinating. Uh, was quite the show there, Doctor. Yeah, yes. yeah. I, what did that, like, like when it when they popped, was it like sparks coming inside the tube itself? You were seeing small sparks of like green and blue and silver and then white and then black in some of those areas before the tube looked to be cloudy at one point in time and then was completely clear. And in the projected image, you see just that one nanobot, the one that was sending off the signals there, but no longer moving, sending signals, interacting, doing anything. Didn't want to do that. Well, uh. we still have a uh, commands structure of some sort that perhaps we can get data from, but... Uh... Galaxia, I've noticed that you have uh, streamers or sparklings going on. Uh, is that uh, is that normal? Or? Oh, oh, oh! No, I, I was, I, 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 I was just really excited, but then Jules did a lot of stuff, and now I'm just really more excited. Questions have been answered, but now more questions have been formed. Um, yeah. That does tend to happen I'll around Mister Gray's Park, does it not? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's kind of the mo. <laughs> For once, I just like a yes or no answer, but not in this situation, unfortunately. Well, uh, could you adjust Science. the? Uh, can you adjust the uh, nanobot just a little bit to the left, and um, to arc here? Um, is there a certain industry logo, perhaps, on the casing of this nanobot? Yes. <laughs> but it doesn't match the current logo. But it's close enough. It looks to be like an updated or newer version of this logo. But Vanquish Industries does appear to be on this small nanobot. I was afraid of this, but uh, at least we know where it came from now, so it's more positive. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's really, really nice of uh, bad guys to brand their shit. Question for the group. When you all first came together and faced the Enhanced Seeking Droid, Prism and Dr. Graysmark had extracted a piece of the like computing portion of the robot. Is it stored here in the lab? Well, yes. Ah, oh, uh, shit. 
I uh, it's right over there, cabinet number three on the left, second door on the right. Yes. What are you about to do, Will? What are you about <laughs> to do to us? What what's good? I am but a humble storyteller <laughs> here God. to share this experience with all of you. No, um, <laughs> Jules Malin alerts you that the computing parts that were found on the enhanced seeking droid uh, are activated. They are not sending out a signal. They are not receiving a signal. But there is coding being processed through the hardware that you guys had taken from that droid. What? It's not attached to a power source. It's not attached to any kind of frequency transmitter. But it is processing some kind of code at the moment. Is the camera on there? Yeah, hold on. Well, it was just a processor, right? So Yes. It's just coding right now, so I can't... So it can't be... The famous last words. Well, so I, oh, Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was... Everyone heard, heard this from Malin, so... Um, Oh boy. Um I go over to where it's stored. I don't open it yet, but uh, this You can hear clicking as you get closer to it. It wouldn't happen to sound like Morse code, would it? No. Okay. It sounds like something Imagine Metal Legos. I don't want to and you're imagine pushing, metal Legos. And you're like pushing the pieces together, making those small popping, clicking sounds. Um, is it at a fast pace? Is, is it like a staccato? Uh, no, it is currently at a slower, a very slow pace. It sounds like somebody. Uh, like pecking a keyboard, essentially. Prism Galaxia, we might need to be ready. Ready for you what exactly? I don't know. There's some clicking going on that I do not like. Was, um, is this not your Metal Lego experiment? Or is that the other cabinet? No, that's the other cabinet. It's next to the other. It's next to the photo of eighties. The handle to the drawer falls off. Well, that's not supposed to happen. Oh, Malin, hold it back, please. Malin moves um, forward. Yeah, Galaxia is currently. Uh, she's still scared. She is still, I literally have the afraid condition. Um, so I am, <laughs> Galaxia is not, not ready to handle this. And she is uh, going to run and um, hide behind Prism. <laughs> <laughs> I'll inflate just a little bit so that you got a little bit more bulk to hide behind. Okay. Yeah. I, go, I, th I would think if you would allow this uh, presence, I, if for my lab, I would have some sort of safety precaution, um, just in case something in this would happen in my lab. Yes. So, I the would go safety, to the computer. Yes. Safety measures of the lab sanctorum are not engaged because the lab sanctorum does not sense a threat or a danger to anyone within. Uh, I would like to override that. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bitch, yeah. you thought, Lab. Lab, you thought. Who do you think made you? <laughs> <laughs> so we will count this as an always prepared. So give me another unleash your powers, but using superior instead of freak. 
Also, can I just vote that if we ever need to override in the future, can we just get like a green or a big red button? Just some something we could just slap real in the really in the moment. I'll leave that. <laughs> Actually, would there be a, le a big red button since I rolled a twelve? You know where the big red button is. You've told <laughs> no one else where this big red button is. <laughs> Actually, for safety reasons, not not out of distrust, I don't tell tell them where the big red button is. <laughs> I do and tell also, them there is a fair, red, big red button. To be fair, it's probably not that big because you don't want any accidental, uh, you know, just the number of times like my roommate has accidentally turned off the lights, like <laughs> because the light switch is right next to where they hang up their keys, you know? <laughs> so, oh, Dr. Grace yeah. Spark, the safety and countermeasures of the lab, lab sanctorum overridden are now active several energy beam cannons set themselves from the roof channeling the energy from flux's containment center into them primed ready and moving directly to where dr gray sparks eyes lock them malin please move out of the way malin dr Real quick, before we uh, begin shooting cabinet, uh, just a quick question. That is uh, from Advanced Sentinel, yes? The uh, the hard drive? Yes. And we're about to shoot it with the same energy it shot at us? Good point. I mean, only after it's been well, channeled through flux. So I don't know if it's exactly the same, but she definitely did. Yeah, she. <laughs> well, I say no harm done. You know, worst case, lab blows up. We build other. It's no big deal. <laughs> Not the entire lab, just this area. I, I don't try to destroy everything in my lab all the time. Just it was just that one time. Well, that's what you said anyway, the last time. The drawer and, is shaking now. Okay. And um, if the, you said the handle is off? The handle fell off and the screws that would hold the handle in place, they'll be screwed in from the inside, are not there. They aren't even attached to the handle. That means there's a hole in there, isn't there? There's two holes. Very small, but two holes. I make the calculations to aim for those holes. Okay. And... I just fire. Just fire? Are you firing <laughs> all of the cannons? Or just two <laughs> of them? That is such a good question. Or just two aimed and primed directly for the small handle holes? Just two firing directly at the two small handle holes. All right. <laughs> As opposed to... <laughs> <laughs> after after being criticized for destroying my lab <laughs> before <laughs> Dr. Gray Spark moves towards the area two of the energy cannons move along the roof move down alongside almost setting like sh floating shoulder mounted cannons side by side Dr. Grace Park makes the calculations, adjusts their own eyes to look firmly through the two holes. Small beams of energy go through. You hear a pop. And a small bit of smoke comes out of the drawer, but is no longer moving, no longer shaking, no longer making any noise. Maland, if you please very carefully open this section. Malin takes three or four steps forward, adjusts the appendages at the end of their arms to small forceps to fit between the two holes, hook, and draw the drawer out. 
What you see inside is a hard drive, albeit now burned with two perfectly placed holes through it, a small bit of smoke coming from within it. You see what looks to be almost like melted metal off the lower portion of the hard drive, made of some kind of aluminum alloy. Uh, it looked like it started to form some kind of skeletal structure around itself. There is a handful of other metal equipment that it looked to be, for better case, moving towards, but was not yet able to adapt and graph to itself. I would like to, if there's any form of me, um, like melted metal or any kind of, there's no liquid in there, really, is there? No. no, no liquid. I'd still like to just take a scratch of any kind of wiring or uh, scratch off some metal if I can, put it in a test tube to research that. From the the <clears throat> like exoskeleton it was making or from the hard drive itself? Good question, actually. Both, I think. Yeah, poor If we could do both, knows. I would love to do both. Both? Okay. <laughs> but I think I, I want to keep them separate, though, first. Absolutely. Yeah. Once again, you're in your lab. You have full access to any tools of your own trade that you would need to have on hand for something like this. <clears throat> With that being said, scraping away at the exoskeletal form first, uh, you can see that there's small, almost like rifling or uh, uh, screw indentations that hadn't quite yet formed over on it mm. as you start scraping that bit into a a smaller container putting a cover over the top of it and then scraping at the are you going for the metal inside of the hard drive or on the outside inside inside yeah. again another small hooked procedure drawing the pins and and other small bits of metal from within out into another container bringing them over to the microscope. The metal fragments from the exoskeleton that was being made, doing a, a like a, a spectrometer uh, analysis of it, it's aluminum. It's an aluminum alloy, uh, commonly found in most household hardware, screws, nails, drill bits, things of that nature. Uh, safe to assume that those came from the back of the handle to that drawer. Yep. The interior portion like. of the hard drive shows very similar nanobots. None of the modern Bentley variety, but of the time dilating variety. And they are slowly going again forwards or backwards until they are completely inert. Can Galaxia go to the electron microscope that, lol, do you have multiple electron microscopes in your lab? Um, I want to go look at the original, the original sample. Yes. <laughs> of course we do. Um, yeah, no, but I want to go look at the, uh, you know, the original, the one dude that was left after the colleagues became popcorn. Still inert. No frequencies being given off. No, the what was left or the remnants of what was within that tube with it. Nothing there, just that one by itself. Galaxia is going to turn back to the other two and just kind of like stand there and be like, okay, so recap of everything that just happened in the last, like, I don't know, 90 seconds. Um, we found this one thing that had 
it, it looks like it was it was the leader of the nanobots. And so we put lead on it to isolate it. That got rid of it, it sending off signals, but then it made everybody else explode. Then basically like right after that, the cabinet started shaking. Well, no, no, it didn't start shaking, but it started making noises. And then it started shaking. Yes. And now it looks like the thing in the cabinet was like absorbing metal to like build itself into a per. But how does that and that relate? That's what I'm trying to figure out as I point to the cabinet and point to the microscope. So if you'll permit me, prism is like going to take the old inert sample and it's going to compare it to the sample we have of the new stuff. Is there the same corporate logo on the two? I'm guessing there might be. There is not one of the signaling nanobots within the ones that came out of the hard drive. Mm, okay. And it was only the signaling one that had a logo or anything of that nature on it. Okay. What I will say is Prism, you have been on a point of taking information, applying it in a direction necessary to what is occurring around you. This hard drive came from a an enhanced seeking droid with parts from Vanquish Industries within it. These nanobots do not appear to be made by any mean, shape, or form by the Vaquish Industries you know of now, as this thing seems to be in some way, shape, or form ahead. There is a possibility that whatever was used to create the droid, the same person or same people had something to do with the creation of this nanobot that was emitting the directions and frequencies out to those time-shifting ones. Would that be something I could look up on our friendly lab computer? As far as what, which part of the information? If I understood correctly, the contemporary people who would have the impetus in the future to make the little controlling nanobot if i followed you correctly mm -hmm. to see if they've announced that they're working on something like that or anything of that nature well announced on something like that if they've maybe posted facebook photos basically i just want to make sure that one these people exist in our time and not an alternate universe and then um if they do exist i will just sort of turn to the others and go Perhaps at this time we have talked with one of them. A very friendly chat. I'm not saying a violent chat. Just just a friendly chat about what's going on. Uh, you do know for a fact Vanquish Industries does exist. It is a thing. It, it is an actual company. It is a a a medical supply and uh, uh, genetic researching company. Uh, they were the ones who had the blood donation. Uh, set up at the masquerade allowing people the opportunity to be tested to see if they can remove their enhancements and live a normal life Not that much but what about the people in question i guess is where i'd like to narrow things down to the people in question the Main controlling figureheads of Vanquish Industries are not known. It is not public information, um, and it is not accessible without either A, being a part of Vanquish Industries and being a very high position within there, or getting in contact with the government agency known as Aegis and seeing what information they might have. But to the public... There is no known of who or whom runs Vanquish Industries. So I take all that, give it to the others, and say, well, um, I see a few possibilities for us if we want answers. One, we 
go knock on Vanquish Industries' door. I mean, they might be secret, but they must have labs somewhere we can go knock on door. We could go to Aegis. Uh, they might have answers that we don't. Or, um... I don't know, uh, did we save any other, uh... Parts from that, uh... Enhanced Seeking Droid? Uh, maybe we should check on those. Galaxia's just gonna, like, side comment. Like, wait a minute. You mean, like... They really don't have, like, the name of the owner of a company as, like, public information. What the hell kind of shit do y'all have going on down here? Well, is well. honestly, it's it's capitalistic thing where, you know, you put shell company in control and that person doesn't exist. But then you put that shell company under others. It's a whole, like, ball in the cup situation. See, we definitely, we got rid of all of that. I'm no, not going to get into it. I'm not honestly, I agree, <laughs> and I wish we could do what you did. Honestly, I think you have better system than we do. I, I'd i be inclined to agree. Galaxia, you receive a telepathic communication. There's only been one time in Galaxia's time here on this planet that someone has opted to speak to them in their mind and not verbally. And it is the Dean of the Society of Sabres, the former hero known as the Hermit. After the Society of Sabres was disbanded for being found to be a Aegis agent training facility being used against supers by taking sidekicks young heroes and those of the like and weaponizing them against the heroes themselves when it was disbanded hermit disappeared you receive a message i would not speak with Aegis. And in all honesty, I'd research it yourselves. I will speak with you soon. And just as quickly as that cold and stoic, familiar voice appears, it leaves your mind. Blaxia... I assume I can't respond. You can mentally. Okay, great. Um, great. Yeah, Galaxy is just gonna just gonna say, okay, good to know. Thanks for the input. I hope you're doing well. And let me know if you need me to bring you anything, okay? No response. But you okay. know that the message was received. I take that as you don't need anything. You're all set to go. I say that verbally <laughs> out loud. So the rest of y'all hear, hear the very end. I was going to say like, I'd like a latte. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> this does <laughs> give you an idea, Galaxia. Many questions, but definitely an idea. What is your savior at currently? Oh, currently? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I think I'm freakier than I am savior-y. Yeah, I, my savior is at a, it's at a zero. It's at a zero. Okay. You wouldn't describe this person as a freak, which is why I asked specifically for savior. Mm. There was one. And only one person that worked within the Society of Sabres that you absolutely trusted. They absolutely had yours and the rest of the Gray Sabres' best intentions in mind at all times. You know Agent Ryuk is retired. When he found out what happened, he walked away completely. But he is still within Halcyon City. And does, as far as you know, 
still have access to Aegis files and information if you ever wanted to reach out. Yeah. Galaxia is Galaxia will look up uh, at the two of you and say, um, we need to stay as far away from this corporate bullshit as possible. I have to say, I don't trust it. But you know who I do trust? Agent Ryuk. And if I remember correctly, might still have a little bit of information or a little bit of access without the affiliation. That would be a great boon. Uh, where are they in the city exactly? Perhaps we uh, could pay them a visit. That's a great question. If I, They've been trying to kind of lay a bit low since the... Uh, the dissolution, but um, I can ask around because we got to say they were beloved by many. So I hope there's someone who's kept in contact close enough to know at least. And quick question for you, uh, uh, presence. Yes. Um, Hermit and Ryuk are different people, correct? Hermit was the dean, uh, Dean Vostat of cool. the Society of Sabres. Agent cool. Ryuk was the handler or the scabbard for the Gray Sabres. He was there, the agent overlooking their training. Cool. So, like, just, you know, one step below him, focused yeah. on a specific thing. Yes. Cool. Cool. <clears throat> oh, also Hermit says hi. Just I, he he didn't, but I'm just letting you know he didn't actually say hi, but um, you know, I think anytime he talks, that's kind of just him saying hi. Prism, so you you were the one who succeeded on the information about Agent Gemini. In the last session, uh, Hermit is essentially the alien version of a nocturnal creature man within a comic book company who uses two letters for the name of the company, mm -hmm. um, who served right alongside Agent Gemini was a part of the first golden era of the Golden Sentinels over 80 years ago. Uh, disappeared oh. during the Bronze Age of Heroes um, and has not been seen since. So I find my phone and I start going through it. Do I still have Two Dudes number? Yep. All right, so I look to Galaxia and I say, well, uh, if uh, your shadowy friend is uh, not findable, perhaps we can go through uh, Gemini or Two Dude. He might, uh, he might have some information for us, perhaps. Ah, fantastic idea. Though I will say we will have to bring him some sort of gift, perhaps two things of tacos? Means we can get more tacos. You know what I'm like. You know what this plan's already. I like Prism starts walking for the door. He is set. He is ready to go. <laughs> um, I, I I'm just gonna holler and be like, wait, we should. Uh, I point to the smoldering cabinet. I'm like, we should probably help Jules clean up first. Oh, you know, good point, on top good of point. it. It's Mal's also it. roughly about ten in the evening. Oh. At this point. Oh. I mean, I don't know about uh, Prism, but I would assume I would assume um, if this is the same evening which I performed five surgeries. Yes. Yes, it is. A bitch is probably tired. <laughs> A little bit. Well, um, in that case, um, 
if you are still up to it, I'd say go for it. Malin can honestly clean most of this up. Um, I um, am going to take a short rest, <laughs> a nap, and um, have some coffee in the morning if you would like to see me then and just update me on the status of uh, two dude and um hermit and and ryuk and all that um yes 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 well, uh, I'll, I'll i'll help melon and uh there is something uh well you know what you have your good rest and uh i'll say something to galaxia that uh is very very important but i'll leave you in the dark for reasons which will become apparent later Galaxia is just like very excited. So, are we going to speak with Agent Gemini, <laughs> two dude, this evening? Uh, I think we're going to wait. This a tomorrow. I think this is considering it's ten in the evening for a, for a person that is in their eighties. I would. Be- he looks to be in his late sixties, but it is known that he is over a hundred and forty years old. Yeah, um, but he can stay awake for the same amount of time as <laughs> two dudes. But now I don't he's it works two that way. old just... dudes. <laughs> just <laughs> means that he also sleeps the same amount of time as two dudes. <laughs> It just means now his bedtime is like three in the afternoon, afternoon. being in his late sixties. <laughs> oh my and god! It's ten a.m. right now. <laughs> oh, ten p.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you up watching Nick at night. <laughs> you fell asleep to crime dramas. Okay, leave the guy alone. Ancient <laughs> Aliens is on in the background. You Why just hear the show. Boom, boom. All evening. <laughs> so, with that, I assume you guys are going to go about straightening up the events that transpired in the lab today, securing the samples that you do have currently, still, and then getting some rest for the evening. There is yeah. one thing I want to do when it's just Prism and Galaxy, if that's all right. Absolutely. So, uh, Galaxia is, you know, is, you know, you're still, you know, feeling a little bit. All right. Well, let me ask. You still have Afraid, right? I do. All right. Excellent. Didn't want to overstep my bounds. So, um, Prism, you know, is going to finish, uh, finish cleaning up with Malin. Uh, is going to turn to you, Galaxia, and say, is, um, is everything all right? You, uh, you seem a bit skittish or, um, at least more on edge than usual. Is, is everything Okay. Um, I think it's just been a really long day and, um, I don't know. I, I, I was, I was in a really fantastic mood, having a great time and then was just completely caught off guard. And I, um, I don't know. I have to say I'm not too proud of myself for that because we should know better. It's I'm not new to this. <laughs> it is, um, it's completely acceptable to make mistakes and be caught off guard. But if anything, I envy you in the way. I um, your your ability to bring happiness to a situation. It is uh, what what is word that I'm searching for? Affable, perhaps, is word I want. Oh. And uh, where I don't I'm going know if we this. have that word on my planet, also known as coral. <laughs> corals. <laughs> I think it's affable. I, I think affable is the right one. I, I, I think it means good. <laughs> That's the intent. But no, um, so where I'm Malin going with this. Like, def- <laughs> you hear Malin like spread the, like read the definition, <laughs> like the definition of affable. Yeah. There you go. According to MiriamWebster.com, affable means. <laughs> Thank you, Melon. You are very useful. Um, But where I'm going with this is I actually want to uh, comfort and support, if that's all right. And since I did say I envied something about them, I think I can roll with Freak instead of Mundane. Yes, you can. 
Excellent. Then let us roll a freak and see what happens. Uh, it's a partial success, an eight. It is an eight. Do you, Galaxia, agree with the words that Prism is saying? Do you feel that they're coming from an honest place? Yeah. No, I do think, okay. and and yeah, I, I think they are right where it's just like, you know, it is it is nice to be able to drop your guard for a hot second. It's difficult to live with your guard up continuously. So with that, clear the afraid condition. I'm just going to give Prism a big hug. Well, careful. If you squeeze too hard, I might crack. Actually, no, it's very impossible. I think only person that could crack me is, well, you know. <laughs> Do I? Well, you know, he kind of wears cape. He's big macho man. You, we, we maybe dealt with him earlier today. Right, right, right. Look, I was... I. <laughs> There was a lot going on, okay? I'm just messing with... And I start, like, messing with her shadow, starry hair a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we should get some rest. I'm glad you're feeling better, but... um, And just for sake of argument, how is Flux doing? Because I imagine she's still in the chamber. Is she out at this point? She is out. There is chocolate around the corner of her mouth that was left there specifically by Jules. Uh, it's part of the energy release. Uh, the chocolate has trace amounts of citrus and the uh, citrus that's in there was even specifically created by Dr. Gray Spark to where there are small portions of uh, electrolytes and a various variety of vitamins and minerals within it. So it's like a good orange julian with like a chocolate swirl to it. And it's like perfect for hangovers. Yes! Well, now I have something new to order on Amazon. Thanks for that. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh um, my god. Um, before we go to bed though, can I can I go and like I'll, I just want to like I don't know on like 500 post-its like just like write like you know like on one post-it I heart you you're put it over the window <laughs> and just put them all on the window for when she wakes up yes absolutely <laughs> um dr gray spark you're going to need to resupply on post-it notes <laughs> at some point in time in the near future but what the hell <laughs> <laughs> the message is sent and hopefully received when she wakes up uh you guys do know that this is normal this isn't out of the ordinary it is going to take this two days worth of time for her body to reset so this isn't anything out of the ordinary this isn't something to be afraid of or be worried about kind of thing um if necessary malin is equipped to go inside and provide her with any kind of medical attention, nutrition, anything that she might need during that time to make sure everybody is safe. But is she equipped to provide her with human interaction? Absolutely. <laughs> because as we all drift... There's a twitch on there. Sleep. <laughs> hey! <laughs> As everyone slowly <laughs> finds themselves getting rest, Dr. Gray Spark, the ideas and mechanizations that you have witnessed and been around today are initially what is traveling back and forth through your thoughts. It's not until you are laying in bed contemplating what all of these things might mean in their separate pieces gathered together spider webbed and weaved into one another 
you find yourself falling asleep. And it's as you are falling asleep, an idea strikes you. If these nanobots can move forward through time, and some also simultaneously move backwards through time, Malin's AI, if you take binary code, is genetically perfect to her. What if these could be used to, in a sense, reverse engineer a person from an incident? Could it be done with binary code? since it interacted with the hard drive? Could it be done with organic material, such as prism? And while sleeping, you dream of the event that transpired, that led to the passing of a loved one, and the forever changing of a friend's life. When I wake I up, I'm sorry. Go ahead. When I do eventually wake up, it would be a sudden wake up, like a eureka moment. That would, and because I would have ideas. <laughs> a new day dawns on our wonderful heroes. Many ideas and plans set forward, or at least prepared. In what way? Will they go as we turn the fourth page? On the back of it, we see the person shown in the black jumpsuit in the beginning of the issue, standing at the end of a hallway, a sterile, metallic hallway, and not directly shown, but definitely ascribed to the imagination, splatters and bodies litter the hallway. Standing at the end of it, that canine-like being turns his head sideways. Oh, they're on it. They are on it. I hope they keep going. Alarms showing flashing red lights. The onomatopoeias of sirens and, and alarms shown against the panels as this person takes off right down the hallway. And that'll be where we take our first break. <gasps> Everyone gather a drink, have a bio break, take a moment to breathe out all of the weight that our players have found themselves with currently. So <laughs> we will pick up shortly after Bro, our break. We um, have only been playing for like an hour and 15 minutes and... <laughs> So much has happened. This has not been a shopping episode, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stream. We'll be back in about five to ten, maybe more. Stick around. Shopping for quests.
Cyber Welcome back to Cyber Nation Uncensored, everybody. I am the presence, the game master here for Masquerade the Mighty, a masks, a new generation life play. Joined here with me are my wonderful heroic crew of Jules, Grace Spark, Prism, and Galaxia. Now, picking up where we last left off. The morning has come. Jules, you find yourself upright. Ideas moving at the most rapid of states. Um, even trying to contain them within your own mind isn't possible. You're almost muttering and going through equations and ideas under your breath as you're getting ready that morning. And possibly too fast for even a Malin to uh comprehend because they might I might be saying too fast that it's one of those things where I could be saying um you know one word and she picks up picks it up as another word something like that and I'm trying to write down uh, as much of the information ideas I have as possible uh while asking Malan to also like either record it or write it down as well um and um just writing down theories on poss possibilities of what I could do with these nanobots, uh, with this nanotech. Um, and who would I test it on first? I mean, of course, it's got to be Malin. Um, and if it works on um, Malin, then I'd see if, I, if there's a way to pass I'd, I'd definitely discuss it with the prism um maybe even find a better way for flux to control um her powers maybe shorten the time that she would need to recover you definitely know that you are going to need a substantial amount of these nanobots and seeing that they aren't a self-replicating type. Um, this is something that you would need to find the source of. Because this is very obviously outside of the technological capabilities of the current modern world. But you know that somebody in the modern world currently has them. And this is a possibility. This is something that could be attempted. Galaxia, what are you doing? as you awaken this morning. So <clears throat> I know we haven't really, uh, it, we haven't really talked about sleep <laughs> and the necessity of uh, for Galaxia before, but in my mind, um, I, I kind of feel like she doesn't, Sleep isn't something that she needs to survive being a, you know, just kind of a, a spectral being. Um, so, uh, but I do think that she gets a lot of, uh, a lot of personal fulfillment out of, um, quiet time and meditation. Okay. Um, so she wasn't. Like she definitely did not spend a full eight hours in a dark room sitting by herself. That's not what she did. Um, she she probably uh, uh, or she did uh, spend a good hour or two just doing her 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 little rituals. Um, uh, I'm sure she she's got some uh, some some fun things that she's taken from home. Uh, and then she would uh, start painting. Hmm. And um, Galaxia has started, um, uh, you know, she's just got some canvases in, in, in her room. Uh, it's almost like a little studio. Uh, she has a little studio space in it. And that's part of how she relaxes. Um, All right. And that's what she's doing when, when y'all wake up. Well, she's cleaning up after her painting. She's no longer painting. Uh, 
Well, actually, being a being comprised of stardust and of the cosmic energies of the infinitely known and unknown universes, time is different for you. Where beings on their planet sleep through soul cycles of their celestial bodies, you find it only necessary in a form of recovery to remove the exhaustion to ease the stress your paintings lining the inside of the room there is in this moment a identification each painting seems to discern almost the same point in time but from a different perspective mm. another universe you've witnessed from its beginning to its collection of moons and planets the gravitational forces holding asteroids in place some of them some of your paintings even showing like the the landscapes of some of these planets here in um, one of the paintings and you don't recall ever doing this shows an almost barren ice scape crags of collected uh, uh celestial uh ice forming in like mountain peaks and and breaks along the surface I swear for a moment there is the outline of a person standing at the edge of one of these crags you don't remember painting there just very small outline of a person standing at the edge of this ice scape. I'm going to take the back of a small paintbrush and just kind of like gently rub it across. As you move the brush over it's paint there it's not like something is actually standing there this was very obvious like small brush strokes of a small shadowy figure standing there but nothing else happens mm. Prism. You know what? <laughs> Go ahead. It's my painting. Yes. And is. if I don't remember painting it there, um, Galaxia is going to go and get out some uh, black and gray and brown paint and with a small brush She's going to paint over the figure and um, extend the cliff. So, okay. you know, if the cliff was originally horizontal, it'd go up a little bit more and just covers the figure. And um, I, yeah, I, I get rid of it. Okay. The I'm not going gaslit approach. by my own paintings. Prism. Yes. You awaken to a calm morning. There so, isn't much going on in the lab currently, in the lab sanctorum. And you're used to getting up and Jules is already in a project or in some kind of study research 
collection, uh, Galaxia somewhere nearby, giving ideas or or bouncing theories back and forth between Jules, uh, or playing music in the background that they had recently heard and are trying to understand why dubstep is popular. Who knows? Well, dubstep, what year is it? <laughs> is it 2011? Um, <laughs> but it is seemingly calm. No strange dreams. No unhappenstantial occurrences as you awaken this morning. Got it. Um... Real quick, because I would like to add this little bit of flavor if you'll indulge me for a little bit. So, our spaces in the lab sanctorum, how big are they roughly? So I would say the personal spaces would be anywhere between 30 to 35 feet by the same. So, cubic spaces, um, but individually set by jewels to be in the best interest of those who are within. Excellent. That actually works out very well, because what I'd like to imagine for Prism's room is it's literally like a Zen garden where there's koi ponds, there's water features, and it is just the most serene thing where he doesn't so much sleep as I like to imagine, but he does meditate for like a good six, eight hours. Um, so when his eyes, his Christian lies open, he takes in a deep breath and he goes... Hmm, it's awfully, it's awfully quiet uh, this morning. Usually, Gray Spark or Galaxia is around. Hmm. Um. Well, I guess I'll go see what's going on. And uh, Prism will rise and go out, and still nothing. Still just serene morning. Yeah. All right. In that none case, none of the monitors are on. None of the none of the uh, projections are set. None of the tools are active. You can see, you can hear the dull hum of the uh, capacitor siphon system that's still working through the energy from flux. But other than that, calm morning. Approximately what time are we talking? Six, seven, eight? Probably around six or seven in the morning. Prism finds his phone, looks at it and goes... Well, he either sleeps as much as two dudes, or he's up into the energy of two dudes. So, um, I'll send him a text. He, he probably knows text, yeah? And I'll just send a text like, are you available to meet later, maybe? Message sent. Goes out. The bubble turns green. Really off-putting. <laughs> But yeah, um, unless anything else happens, I think Prism is just going to enjoy the silence and the bit of calm in the center of this storm. Uh, Prism, roll a I will describe the situation and then you will let me know how you respond to it. Okay. At the entrance way to the lab sanctorum, you see what appears to be a shadow pulling from just the overhead lights themselves over by the door um, as they start to get darker. Okay. And this darkness seems to continue. Uh, in a very rapid state until it reaches an almost umbral shade. From within that shadow, you see a person step through, dressed in all black, a black trench coat or duster of some kind with uh, shoulder guards on it, Reflective, but still almost like they're filled with shadows themselves. The entire outfit is almost as dark as the umbra that they stepped through. A almost neo-futuristic, uh, like the war tech gadget masks, the full head covering masks uh, mm -hmm. over the head. And 
strange red glyphs almost seem to be like LED lighting from underneath, like they're pulsing, mm-hmm. but not from an electrical source. Like this isn't a projection from a screen of some kind. This seems to just be glowing within the helmet itself uh, as this person steps into the lab sanctorum. Okay. Two quick questions. Uh, One, if I glance at the clock above Flux's chamber, then glance away, then glance back at the clock, is the clock still readable? Basically doing the uh, lucidity test if this is a dream. Yes, the clock is still readable and is still ticking down from a 20, almost like a 29 hour mark. Okay. Second question. Um, Are the lab settings still set to override or have they been returned to normal? I, I would have returned them to normal. They were returned to normal the night before. In that case, since... The lab isn't freaking out. Again, Prism has trust in Gray Spark. Since the lab isn't freaking out and deploying the whole shooty shooty bang bangs, I think Prism's just gonna kinda look at the figure. The and lab say, hasn't had a chance to respond yet. Oh, this I is see. your moment as this has occurred to let me know how Prism would respond to this. Got it. Okay. Um I think Prism's gonna wait probably about five, ten seconds, and then if it starts going south, it starts going south, but he's willing to see what happens. Okay. Uh, For that, I will need a... I need an... Dr. Gray Spark. When creating and setting up the defense systems to the Lab Sanctorum, Would the defense systems have been notified of known heroes to not immediately attack them? Of known heroes? Of known heroes. Yes. Does Dr. Jules Grayspark consider a vigilante a hero? Ah. Well, I would have to ask if it's a known vigilante. It is a known vigilante. <laughs> oh. Are those ones a case by case basis? <laughs> <laughs> I, like honestly, I, I mean, like, I, I, I do. I let me put it this way: I probably would get a warning if the Punisher came in. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so, like, as much as I, you know, has as much good as the Punisher has done. <laughs> I want to be ready. <laughs> Still a man with a lot of guns so, walking into a room. <laughs> yeah. With that being said, Prism. Yes. You do see two of the many energy cannons within the lab sanctorum set and arm, but do not immediately fire. Prism's going to look, I guess, up at the ceiling where the uh, the guns are, then look back at the figure, then back at the guns, and says, Well, they're not shooting you, and you aren't throwing things at me, so um, how do you take your coffee? Black? With sugar? Cream? The helmet disengages, and you hear a, a set of whirling and clicks, and then two clasps, like canvas belt clasps, get unclicked from underneath. As the helmet comes off, now looking at everything, more awake, especially in that cannons came from the ceiling, didn't shoot. I'm awake now. This is a vigilante known as Silhouette. The helmet is removed. You see a 19-year-old male. Uh, jet black hair that is cut very buzz short and very pale skin. You can almost see through the fibers of his hair to his scalp. Um, Bright emerald green eyes. Not the full eye, but the iris itself. I... Black. 
Very good. Do sure. you want it uh, double sweet, extra strong? We have very, very advanced coffee making facilities here. It's actually one of Grace Park's great features. The here, let me show you. And again, Prism is just playing gracious host. Like he might not know who this is, or he has an inkling. Like maybe his brain hasn't fully, fully caught up. But he's gonna be a good host until what I'm assuming is either Silhouette's gonna tell him why he's here, or the others are gonna walk in. One of the two. Uh, is this a uh... Uh, as strong as it can and as sweet without cream this is going to be a lot of talking he like goes to set the the helmet onto one of the tables and like stares up at the cannons to make sure it's not going to shoot his helmet the um, ping I get I guess would yep I mean I roll my eyes <laughs> uh, like, Malin alerts you that a vigilante has appeared within the lab sanctorum. Uh, code name Silhouette. Okay. He's oh, one yeah. of the good ones, but he's not the best kind of guy. <sighs> well, I'll set you down for later. I put, I put my notes to the side, and. Uh, just kind of clean myself up a bit, try to look classy, classier than silhouette, just to be <laughs> somewhat his poor attempt to be intimidating. <laughs> Fair or... enough. <laughs> and just uh well, we have guest Malin. Um and uh I'll go and probably pass by Galaxy on the way and just uh let her know as well. So Galaxia's jewels make sense. Galaxia, his way we have past. guest. We have a guest. Yeah. Oh. Um this early? Apparently. Are you familiar with Silhouette? Am I familiar? Am I familiar with Silhouette? That's such a good question. Um I will say you are all aware of Silhouette. He is somebody who does operate on the outer sides of the law, but does so for what he believes to be the best intention of the people within Halcyon City. He will break into an active crime scene in order to collect like fingerprints and things of that nature to prove that that person did it without a, a warrant, uh, a permission. Uh, he makes sure that the people who are committing the crimes are found guilty for their crimes. Oh. I'm just going to be like, oh. Ah. It sounds like an interesting kid. Let's, let's go say hi. As you guys make your way out to the central lab area, Prism, how is that uh how's that coffee making coming along? So as Grace Park and Galaxia and Malin, as you all walk in, you see that Prism has a cold brew coffee mug, or not mug, a pot, and is just pouring, you know, a double strong cup for silhouette, and he's explaining, well, as you see, cold brew, it's uh, the most caffeinated form of coffee and the best part is that uh, you can drink it any time. And uh, I've also added a little bit of vanilla miller, vanilla milk. It's uh, very nice with this flavor of coffee I think you'll find. As long as it's strong. Let, really. let me put it this way. I got out the black label stuff. So this thing will probably keep you up for the next three days. That's helpful. Might, might need more of that as the rest of you enter into the room. <clears throat> he doesn't take a drink of the coffee, still holding it in his hand. Uh, looks to Dr. Grace Park. Doctor, I need the nanobots that you took from the victims of the masquerade event. I'm sorry? I need the nanobots that you took from the victims of the masquerade event. May I ask why? (sighs) 
there is a familiarity to what was used on the victims to someone that I recently put behind bars. I think there's some link between the two and I can't currently prove it without having a working sample of the nanobots. Are you aware of what these things do? No. But I know that they were injected into a handful of enhanced people whose DNA was then stolen and sold to Vanquish Industries less than two months ago. We already knew that part, right? Oh. This is way before. Okay. That explains why it was those victims in general. But why even have the blood drive in the first place? Mine was done by a villain who was trading enhanced DNA to a to vanquished but vanquish has found a way to pin it on an individual worker being the one who did the money transfer and who is this unfortunate soul I don't want to put them in any more danger than the people they trusted already put themselves in Vanquish Industries found a way to pin the entire sale of enhanced DNA onto this one worker. (laughs) When this one worker in no way, shape, or form would have ever been able to get in contact with the person who was doing it. Let alone provide them with the nanotechnology that was used. Similar to the ones that are in the containers that you took from the victims of the masquerade event. With these, and you believe you having these nanogenes would help prove his innocence. His innocence and a direct tie to Vanquish Industries and their use of enhanced mercenaries to cause more harm to enhanced people. Well, unfortunately, there might be a problem with that. You watch the... What was at that point rigid, confident, (laughs) formed young man? Shoulders drop. Like the, this has now become more than I was expecting it to be at your response. Okay. And then he takes a drink of the coffee now. Can I get him to roll a take a powerful blow, please? ELH saw that chat and was like, I know exactly the time. So, as the presence, I don't roll for these things. I know, it's mostly just a joke. (laughs) Um, But what I will say is, are you trying to get a better read on this person from that situation, from the conversation that took place? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I basically want to know... just context clues basically is so roll to pierce the mask yeah I, that's that's what i figured i just wanted to be sure all right uh let's see pierce the mac is mundane okay yep. well and you can mundane. absolutely use the plus two on that yeah i'm gonna use the plus two on that because i'm at a minus one so mm. okay with the yeah plus you're not two, the most mundane of creatures yeah with the plus two that's an eight so good thing i had that okay. plus two thank you uh hey. nova star thank you Shout out to Nova Star. That's the creator of Two Dude. Oh, 
There you go. So nice. with that, dude, dude. So does that, does that Yo, make it a plus four? The one... You know what? That's oh a valid point. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> with the redemption of two dudes. <laughs> <laughs> so with that. I will give you a bit of information and then you can ask a question about the person. Okay. Um, with Prism's uh, up to this point understanding of like the many heroes within Halcyon City, mm -hmm. you are aware that it was recently put in an expose in a uh, like a tabloid here in Halcyon City that silhouette is the brother of a hero named Phantom. They have identical powers. They both use advanced technology and shadowmancy or shadow magic. Um, where Phantom is more of a infiltrator, uh, rogue in the shadows, looking over and watching, uh, silhouette is more of a aggressive feet to the you know feet to the pavement ear to the ground vigilante and now your pierce the mask question does it look like or am i getting the vibe that silhouette is willing to take no for an answer here or is he expecting a fight more or less it looked like he was expecting the what is said about him to carry much more weight in this situation, but he is still a young man trying his best in his own way. And he understands that if he's told no by heroes, he has to accept that no, but he'll find other ways to try and solve this issue if it's denied here. Got it. Then, Not, oh, go ahead. I I was just going to say I fucking love this kid. He is <laughs> like great. literally. I I I'm like can can, the, can silhouette join the party? Like <laughs> I love this kid. Maybe, maybe we'll get him on round two. We'll, we'll get him in. But um, yeah. I'm, pick, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> picking up where I think Jules was going, though, I, I think you, I, I, Adam, I think I know where you're going with this. So Prism's mm -hmm. going to turn to Silhouette and say, it's not so much that we wouldn't be willing to part with this nanobots. It's more the fact that in our um, experimentation, we, well... Perhaps I should just show you the tapes. Uh, may I, Dr. Graspark? I motion at the uh, electron microscope and the terminal there. Please. Yeah, uh, honestly, I, I'm going to look at him and be like, uh, I know the, 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 the system, but we're cool, right? We're cool. Like, nothing's going to happen here. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. Um, well, no, I'm, uh, I'm looking at, at, at silhouette mostly here. He's waiting to see what it is is going to be shown. Like he's already at the, this is going to take a lot more. Like there's more to this information I have to learn. And I thought I already had it figured out. Yeah. yeah. Can we Once... just take him to the lab? <laughs> You're in the lab currently. Oh, You're I thought we room. were in the kitchen. Well, no. it's kind of a lab <laughs> kitchenette situation where we just kind of I, have like I, a floating bar. and. Bro, I thought we were in the kitchen drinking coffee. In my mind, I was over leaning on the counter, like making tea. You can get, I would probably program this place to get you coffee anyway. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I am British after all. I must have my tea whenever I want. Um <laughs> No, but um, as soon as um, Silhouette takes that first sip of his cold brew, of his extremely cold, uh, strong cold brew, um, I see that has him kind of slightly letting his guard a bit, and I, I uh, kind of program the the guns to kind of just like, okay, he's he's good. Awesome. <clears throat> so you guys are setting up to show him the events of the night before. Yep, what, a, what had occurred with the nanobots, the 
identification of the central, for lack of a better term, nervous center bot to the rest of them. And then the displays of the ones moving from Victorian gene bots to full nanotechnology ahead of its time and the latter in reverse until nothing. And then the lead alloy placed over it in one of the vials, resulting in the destruction of all of the other ones in that vial. Yeah. I think we also let them know that some of the, I guess, kind of logos uh, on some of these nanobots aren't completely vanquish. Like they're like different versions of it, but it would be enough to like where they could not be proven or like not be instigated into the, into this. Silhouette grabs the armor pieces off of his shoulder that looking at, there is definitely a advanced technological part to this as he removes both of them placing the bottom halves to each other creating like a small black egg separating it out you see connected between the two of them a hologram as he sets the pieces on top of one of the workstation places as a hologram then shifts from along the horizon to directly in front of him And he's making note of the changes in time between the nanobots, the central like nervous center bot, the frequencies that they're giving off, their interactions with one another, one moving backwards through time, one moving forwards through time. Interfering with it causes this reaction between them. Uh, Do you disclose what happened with the hard drive to him? I would want to. Yeah, I, I would. I think Prism would want. I to. would. Yeah, I would, and I would also be just. I would say it in a way just to uh, make him very aware of the situation. If if we were, or if he was to try and sneak off with it somehow. Okay. So pr- present it to me. Yeah. Um. And so I show we show him the uh, footage of what happened with the um the hard drive. And I explained to him the danger of these nanobots goes far beyond mere manipulation of genes. They can also recreate and they also recreate technology, rebuild, rebuild. to a point they fluctuate you you notice how they get fluctuate forwards and backwards through time yes well they do that so quickly then suddenly nothing the danger of this in your hands no offense this but this these technology just requires so much research that Giving it to anyone else at this point would be highly unethical. I I think what the professor is kind of like saying in layman's terms is um, at the moment, and, and he's seen the hard drive at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like so i'm gonna like point out like like because the hard drive it was like making a skeletal structure you said Mm -hmm. so i'm i'm gonna point at the hard drive and i'm gonna be like so we know that these nanobots were injected into people uh with powers and are kind of meant to like you know possibly recreate that so long story short we don't want you to walk away with some nanobots and then I point at the hard drive 
and then end up for whatever whatever metal you're carrying to turn into one of like the classic superheroes at their heyday because then like you'd be fucked we'd be fucked it it it'd be a big mess but it sounds like you're really on to something here and i don't mean to speak on behalf of us but the hologram screen uh created by the two pauldrons that were set onto the flat surface uh so it takes a hand and pushes it to where the hologram moves onto the wall where your guys's projection is being shown. He moves his hands over the two pauldrons and you see a security camera feed <clears throat> dated two months ago from within Vanquish Industries of him fighting against Bloodhound, a very well known mercenary for hire used by a lot of the more monetarily valued villains to do dirty work. Uh, Bloodhound has the capability of tracking any person, be it across galaxies, across realities, across time, he is believed to be able to find anyone. But he is also said to have the primal and animalistic features and capabilities of a dire wolf. It, uh, oh. The video footage shows Silhouette fighting Bloodhound within Vanquish Industries. In the middle of the fight, Bloodhound makes a large bite into the ribs of Silhouette, which led to Silhouette having the capability to capture and contain him, using the shadows within the room to hold, move, and lock him down. But a bite was made. Silhouette then changes what is seen on the screen to what looks to be like a live video feed from inside somebody's veins, their bloodstream. And you see alongside the platelets, white blood cells, red blood cells, a few small, dark, almost uh, amorphous <clears throat> things moving through. You also see these nanobots. And for anyone looking at the feed information of what is being shown, it is of that current day, current time, down to the second. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at Silhouette and I'm going to be like, did they get you too? I think he got me. And whoever put those inside of the people at your event, he they got them from the same person. Because Bloodhound is locked in the Gorget Warden in Aegis, like su super max prison. He's been there for the last two months. So there's no way it could be him. Whose bloodstream is this? Mine. Yeah. He'll ask permission uh, to show. Uh, to show you guys where exactly it's at on his body. I Before. present a um. I to ask Malin to get like a 
operating table. Like just for just to sit down. I'm not gonna operate in him yet. Yeah. Um yeah. Or, he or he, if at all. Removes the duster. Um underneath the duster you see there is what looks to be two handgun like objects, but they aren't guns. There isn't a uh a magazine well or a upper receiver to it. It looks to be some kind of channeling or or like mechanical focus of some kind that he uses. Um, undoing the harness, he removes the ballistic shirt that he's wearing and you can see there are a wrapping of bite mark, of a large bite mark around his rib cage on his left side. And in one of the scarred holes, you see a small inkwell of darkness. Similar to how the pauldrons appear with that like mirrored finish, but there's still like moving shadow underneath it. Very similar over one of the puncture marks. And he says, that is what's viewing what's inside. And I can't remove them. My body won't let me. Because of your powers. It's ident it identifies them as a natural part of my body, so my powers prevent me from being able to remove them. They fight against it, fight back, more so than white blood cells against a sickness or things of that nature, violently. I asked for I asked for a sample of of the wound or the or blood in general. It, absolutely. Uh Malin can some just two if will. The equipment is brought over to you and presented. And um I I just do whatever research I can to figure out if there is a way I can remove it a similar way that I did um, to the other patients. So you could take a blood sample, a blood vial, but any attempt to only remove a nanobot is immediately met with a volatile reaction from the black cells within the bloodstream that become almost like... Uh, goat heads or or uh like spiked balls of of black iron that will move to defend the nanobot and push it away and push any attempts at grabbing or manipulating or moving the nanobot away bloody hell it's a gift and a curse Okay. So Prism, would you uh, would you think possibly that if I had any so the lead last time we used it cancel out everything. But it also sparked a lot of crackling. You're not thinking of actually no. trying lead in his body no 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 it's i think i get what you're getting at though because if there's a yes i'm gonna look at silhouette and i'm i'm just gonna be like so i mean this is your body. Obviously, you get final say and everything. Um, but you saw how we were able to remove and get rid of everything, right? 
and isolate that one little bot. I don't know if I want fireworks going off in my body. And I'm not exactly sure how my body will respond knowing that harm would be coming to it. I look over the notes I've been taking um, from the dream I had um, and looking over all the notes I took this morning. One of one of the notes I, I'm sure I made notes to possibly find ways to reprogram the nanobots. Ooh. How long, if I did, how long would it take to reprogram just one? You would need to first study and analyze the nervous system bot that you have that's inert in order to get a better understanding of it because it is still advanced technology. This is still something that's well beyond the current capabilities. It might take you two or three months just to analyze that, to even come up with a possible code. I need more time. Input. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Thought just occurred to me. Uh... Can you take a sample of my crystalline nature and uh, see if the shadowy shells attack it as well? This will make sense in a moment. I'm hoping this hunch will pay off. What are you attempting to do with your crystal? So, I guess out of character, what I'm attempting for Prism to do is go and try and act as kind of like a, I guess you would call it a quote-unquote natural filter where mm-hmm. it's kind of like a, a toddler's game where, you know, round, round circle goes in the round hole, round hole, square goes in the square hole. But I'm doing that so everything but the nanobots can go through it, if that makes sense. Like a coffee That's, filter. I was literally thinking, like, you know, is there a way, can we do, like, a dialysis for nanobots, you know? So there, there is one hard part <laughs> to that looking at the projections of the blood and everything that's been shown up to this point Mm -hmm. is that the basis of silhouettes power seems to be some kind of biological or genetic thing. It's something shared by him and his brother. Mm -hmm. Um, So it is literally in his blood Mm -hmm. Um, and being amorphous, they would either fit through any and all of the holes or not fit through any of it. And then, it would fight against the filter. So it is something that could be attempted, but that is something to keep in mind is that there's a possibility that it would fight against the filter because it could stop that from moving through the body. Gotcha. So I'll communicate this all to him and I'll finalize by saying it would be a very risky procedure, but it is an option available to us if you are so willing. God, the I think we definitely need to understand it more. It's not doing anything right now. I've been tracking the frequencies and, and the information that's being passed between all of them. They're not set to attack. They're not destroying any cells within my body. They're not even replicating any cells within my body. They're just there. But what is that? After what happened last night at your masquerade, what if they get activated? That was and somebody my, else ends up with this. That was my concern. Where it could happen at any time, any place, and if you go down in a place no one can find you, well, I don't think I have to spell it out for you. That's why I wanted the ones you guys gathered last night one set to experiment on to figure out my problem and the other to help a victim of circumstance receive the justice that they actually deserve if you're being used as a scapegoat and had no idea of it you don't deserve to rot in jail for a corporate entity oh i I I don't mean to speak on behalf of all of us, but I'm pretty sure we are all on the same page with that one. And that is 
absolutely as soon as because uh, it's only 8 a.m soon as offices open <laughs> we're gonna be <laughs> i think we're gonna be bringing bringing some evidence forward um but yeah we need to we need to figure out i don't know would you be down to stick around because uh, it looks like you and by extension then your brother are a very special case with this i could get my brother here i can't guarantee that he'll be any help but well, is, has he been here. no ha- okay then i don't know if well i look at I look at Dr. Grace Park. I'm going to say, would it be of a good idea to have like almost a uh, quote unquote control sample? It's actually might. This is well beyond my, my intelligence. I'm sorry to say, but since you do share the same genetic genetic structure and similar powers, uh, it genuinely would not hurt to at least try. I know that's not reassuring, but that's the same that's thing all I can give doing. you. Yeah, and where is... your phone goes off? Oh, uh, you hear Spice Girls, and he goes scrambling for some. Sorry, sorry, hold on, hold on. Okay, wait, but what song? Be... But what? Ah, uh, we need God, to know. That's a good one. Um, I, you know what? I made the joke, and then my mind went blank. You put me on the spot. Um, ah! <laughs> if you want to be my lover, I mean that's the that classic one, one but hey. he, sure, we'll make it that one. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, what? sorry. I know I'm out, I'm out of date, but you know it's a, I like the music. What can I say? Oh my God, That's no! Classic. It was the best era of your music. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's a text message back from Agent Gemini. It says. I'll be pretty busy in the shop today, but if you want to swing by, we could share a Coke and a story. I show the text excitedly to the others. Be like, so, um, unless you need me today, I was going to go hang out with Gemini for a little bit. You're welcome to come along too, but I was going to go hang out with Gemini. (laughs) He like he's a kid in a candy store at this point. Just imagine this big yeah. hulking crystal and dragon, just like I want to go have fun, kind of a thing. <laughs> Can we hang out with Grandpa today, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, at this point, uh, Grace Park sees uh, there's no reason to really object to it. I mean, you might get information we need. Uh. Honestly, yeah, and he's stuck on really what to do at this point besides find Phantom. Um, I could call him here if you're comfortable with him knowing about this place. I was only able to find it because, and he points to the ones that are in his bloodstream. Because they're, they're a resonant frequency between them. Like they all share one resonant frequency so I could find them. It, it, wherever they are i can i can go to where they are because my body feels like it's there so i can be there led you he- and, and that frequency led you here yes sorry galaxia. Yeah, galaxia you had something real quick no, I think you were onto something more important because oh wait, does that mean that everybody with this with these nanobots are are now all of the sudden they know where our base is? No. You'd have to at least have some kind of understanding of the nanobots in order to even find the frequency that 
is being given off by all of them and they're giving off and silhouette goes into this long advanced robotics and like pitch harmonics to like frequency spiel for like 10 minutes straight and it's my power oh my allows God. me to manipulate <laughs> darkness shadows they call it magic it's not but i can go to places i've been through the shadows in those areas my body feels like it's here because the bots are here so i was able to come here okay and so then on that note silhouette do you happen to be a hobbyist painter No, but my dad collected a lot of paintings. Is your brother into painting? Not in the slightest. I'm still trying to figure out how this little silhouette got onto my painting wall. Um, the Phantom is a hero, correct? Yes. Then I would have it, and he's a uh, they're known heroes, so I would not have a problem bringing him in over here. I can send for him now if you would like. Sooner the better, I guess, especially in your condition. Wait a second, silhouette. Uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding. You know where all the nanobots are, or just the ones in this lab? I'm sure I could pinpoint where the others are. At least a rough approximation to their to where they might be. I didn't end up right in front of them when I got here. I was still and he points over to where the main door is like 150 feet away. So I, I can't just I I can't give an exact point, but I could possibly give you a close enough approximation but that means I would have to go to that place first I turn to Grace Park so and this is just me speculating could we not perhaps use silhouette as a uh, if you again silhouette if you'll pardon the poor choice of words a bloodhound to find those who are infected, and perhaps you can work your magic, Dr. Graysbark. You can, you know, maybe those who aren't affected like Silhouette and perhaps pull the, the you know, the, 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 the nano machines out of them. I mean, I really hate I those of words. I know, it was a very poor choice. Honestly, I haven't had my coffee this morning. It was very poor taste. I apologize. <laughs> I mean, it would be possible to set up a, um, a network, as it were. Um, but of course, I, I'll, if, if permitting, and and uh, I'm, I mean, I'm thinking one thing at a time right now. I mean, I, I do want to, of course, heal you of your present um, condition with these nanobots. But, that's but then, if a we good remove, point. if we remove them, then I can't go to where the other ones are. Do you see that, like, sudden realization in Silhouette's face? I think we should get your brother here first. Okay. Uh, this will be a little... Give me a sec. And you watch him, like, sit back and his eyes go completely blacked over. You see these, like, massive black horns come from the front of his head up and over the top. A bit of, like, black fire forms in the center of them. And you just start speaking in this off-world language. And then it's gone. He goes, he should be here shortly. Are you all right? Yeah, it's part of the whole... So that happens. That happens every time you do that. And uh, if I use that part of my powers, then yes. 
no no offense but I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad it's that and not something else um anyone who has done extensive knows a lot about heroes and things of that nature can roll and assess the situation or pierce the mask <sighs> I'm going to say that Prism doesn't know a whole lot, so I'm not going to roll. Alrighty. I might as well attempt after everything that's been going on. Let's see. So, what's my assess? What's my okay. assess the situation? Galaxia will try and assess the situation. Okay. Because so. she, she's been... Yeah, she's... <laughs> She's really intrigued by all of these cool humans. What did I get? What did you get, I, Dr. Grace Park? Um, with the superior, um, it is an 11. It is 11. All right. Uh, so two questions. Uh, before your two questions, I'll give you a bit of information. Galaxia, what did you get? I got a nine. You got a nine on pierce the mask or assess the situation? Assess the situation. Alrighty, so you will get one question. Uh, both of you will receive the same bit of information. though. Um, actually, no, it'll be different. Uh, we'll start with Galaxia. The language he was speaking in that moment that he used those dark powers comes from a race of people who lived on a dying planet that sat just outside of the orbital rotation of a black dwarf. Their species, their people, used shadows as weapons, armor, magic, you name it kind of thing. When their celestial body collapsed, they were scattered through the cosmos. Not very many of them survived. One did, at least that can be confirmed here on Earth, and took the name Dark Spectre as a villain. Very old shadow demon alien from across the cosmos. Cool. Dr. Grace Park. The nanobots are a ticking time bomb situation. If you leave them in there at any point in time, they can be activated and either shut him down and give his power to someone else or take control of his body and give an already very powerful young man any other power of somebody who has these nanobots within them. Now, while it is fortunate that he does have the capability to move to wherever these nanobots are, the longer they're in him, the greater the chance of him being manipulated and used is now dr gray spark you have two questions available to you to ask galaxia you have one while you guys think through those questions prism yes your phone goes off again it's not the spice girls this time it's actually hit me baby one more time by britney spears hey. yes hey, britney this is the news alert feature on your phone that's proper sorry mm -hmm. villain at large escape from gorget warden eyes out for bloodhound i just turn the phone around and show it the silhouette and i'm like um we have problem turns to look at the phone. Yeah. 
pretty big problem. Was it because I made the joke? Because if I made the joke and this happened because of it, I will take it all back right now. Oh, no, I don't think it was the joke. He wouldn't have any more unless they didn't do a full body scan of him. And if they didn't know to look for nanobots, they wouldn't be looking for nanobots. Do you think he's coming after you then? No, I think he's still trying to do his job. Which... Ooh, uh, what specifically was that again? Did we ever clarify that? He was injecting people with these nanobots. Either through oh, that, a bite or... That was him. Injection. That was the entire job. Okay, see, I just thought that happened just then, for chance. He was trading the DNA he would attain from doing that, from biting people or sticking them with a rusty knife or saliva. In whatever way he was doing it, he was turning the DNA of supers over to Vanquish Industries. Got it. Okay. Hold on. Another crazy thought. I know it's a morning for crazy thought, but do you perhaps have the ability to know roughly where he is? Because technically, if he's injecting the nanomachines, he must have some on his person. I don't know if he has any on him. If they did a full scan and full search of him when they put him in the jail, then he might not have them on it. But if they didn't know to look for nanobots, then they wouldn't have had a reason to look for nanobots. Let's assume the latter. Could you find him conceivably? Yeah, but uh, that would mean I go directly to him. It's well, not with a... us. Well, that's the thing. That was my second question. Can you take others with you, or is it just you that goes? I can take others with me. I just, it would, it's going to feel cold. Well, I mean, look at me. I'm already frozen. It's crystalline. Well, you know, tomato, tomato, you know. Salt is a crystal-based thing. It doesn't mean that it's frozen. There's no water in salt. All right, listen, we can debate semantics <laughs> later. The, 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 uh, and, and I am made of star stuff. The the point being, uh, of the of the three of us standing here, really only one of us conducts heat that well. Fair assumption. And I gesture to the only person with flesh. <sighs> My brother is on his way. And if he's coming, if he's here and if he heard about this, this is news, like it's breaking news, like kind of thing, then the Golden Sentinels are going to get asked to get involved and I don't get involved in things that they get involved in because I don't want to get turned in for not picking to dance in their masquerade okay A fantastic turn of phrase B we won't let that happen I know we don't we may not have like the most power here but, like, if there is one thing that I am confident in, it's talking to a bitch. Look, you you chuckle, but but look. Will chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Silhouette is actively trying to play 3D mental chess on how to get to Bloodhound while also getting his brother involved, while not getting the Golden Sentinels involved, while trying to solve the nanobot problem, while not removing them, but remove them. He's like in a... He's in his own state and flux of time paradox right now. Do I know what Phantom actually looks like? Does Is he like a spitting image? Uh, nobody has seen Phantom's face kind of thing. Okay. Uh, think 
uh, Moon Knight meets Spawn kind of okay. appearance. Okay. Um, but every time he has been shown to speak with people or in interviews or things of that nature, he's very soft spoken and does sound almost identical to Silhouette. Okay. Ugh. I don't like the idea I just had. <laughs> well, now you got to share it. Trust me, I've had my crazy ideas. You got to share yours. Come on, let go. The idea is to possibly find a way that Silhouette cannot, doesn't have, need to use his powers. And for possibly Phantom, since they have the same powers to use his um, to possibly kind of extend this frequency slash help find a cure um, but at the risk of one of their lives and that thought that same point at the main entrance a shadow forms as aggressively walking out of it you see a almost tattered dark graying hooded cloak black almost uh, uh skin tight but you know to be like ballistic and like fully armor protective suit underneath uh with what looks like uh spirits or ghosts flying up into the cloak portion itself on the body armor underneath. The hood gets thrown back and the mask pulled off. This better not be another one of your fucking jokes, Warren. If this is something that has to do with our father, then we need to take care of it right now. As Phantom enters the lab sanctorum. Hi, would you like some coffee? We're having <laughs> coffee. <laughs> or tea, we also have tea. The the dude who built the place is British. You know we can't not have tea. I'm right here. I know it's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> and with oh. the two brothers facing one another upon entering the lab sanctorum galaxia offering coffee and then tea because the man who built it was british and needed his tea we turn to the final page of issue two where we see bloodhound stepping out into a wooded forest-like area drag his hands across his mouth and looking down the panel zooms in closer and closer to the blood and saliva until we see small nanobots some Victorian aged some hyper modern some neo futuristic and then a 13-year-old boy sitting at the edge of a cliff, feet dangling over this ice expanse with the words, it's all starting to come together. And that's where we end tonight's issue. Number two, Howls and Echoes. A masquerade of the mighty masks a new generation live play here on Cybernation Uncensored. Oh. I am Will or the presence here, the game master for tonight's game. You could find me on Instagram at Arclight Court or on Instagram at Will Sirachi PGM. That is Will S U R A C I P G M. Let's go around the group. <laughs> Give everyone your thoughts. 
we will do the closing questions before we finish, but let's get all of our information out there for everybody before we close for the night. Let's start with Prism. Yeah, so hi, I'm Eel H. Uh, I'm enjoying where this session and where this series is going. I'm definitely invested. Um, I hope my crazy ideas aren't too crazy, but that's half the fun of this sort of thing, in my opinion. Um, you could find me pretty much on Twitch and YouTube at ELHMK1, or if you're on Mastodon these days, it's ELH at Tabletop Social. Just give me a ring there, and I'm happy to reply. Awesome. Galaxia. Hello, my name is Coral. Uh, you can find me on the Twitch at Queer Venture Time, or on the Twitters at Q Venture Time, because Queer Venture Time is too many characters. Um, yeah, we do lots of, uh, I don't know, shockingly queer things. You wouldn't have expected that from the name, huh? <laughs> uh, Community-based. We play whatever we're fucking obsessed with at the time. Right now, it's Crusader Kings. I am 16 years old and running an empire. I'm also genius and super buff. It's great. <laughs> and next... Dr. Graysmark. Dr. Jules Graysmark, Adam Joseph Ferry. Adam turns heel on all social media, Twitch, uh, a little bit on Twitter. I, I'm still, uh, I still have an account, but I don't go on there anymore. Uh, I am on Hive um, and all those other places. Uh, you can also catch me this Saturday uh, from On the Initiative Order, um, continuing the game of Vasen. Uh, we are fighting. Uh, well, not fighting, just uh, searching for um, these ancient uh, Irish uh, creatures and going crazy about it. So if you like watching me go completely nuts like you do uh, on uh, this excellent adventure, you can watch me do more of it. But this time with a Scottish uh, with an Irish accent uh, on the initiative order uh, <laughs> over there. <laughs> this Saturday um, at 5 o'clock. <laughs> I love it. And once again, I am the presence, the GM here for Masquerade of the Mighty. Masks, a, a new generation live play. My name is Will. I'm the lore keeper at Arc Light Court on Instagram and here on Twitch. Let's get into the end of session questions. Let's start with Adam. Do you feel that Jules Gray Spark has grown closer to the team in their own image of themselves or away from the team. Um, at the, uh, tonight he was a little more to himself, so I would say away by definition. Okay, not in uh, a negative way, but it's so not not detached, but more so an introspective. Yeah. Kind of thing. So you're growing into your own image of yourself mm -hmm. after the the dream and the ideas and the the theories kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh with that, you will get to shift one label up and another label down. Gotcha. And while you do that, Coral, did Galaxia grow closer to the team into their own image of themselves or grow away from the team? Oh, 100% closer to the team. Uh, it, today, Galaxia was by no means the star of the show today. And everybody, everybody got like, uh, like the only reason we got to where we are is because of everybody and the sum of the parts. Absolutely. So I do not believe that you have any conditions currently. So you do get to mark potential. Uh, and ELH. I, uh, Prism... Go ahead. I, I would mirror what Coral just said, where I think, again, you know, Prism, obviously there was that scene with uh, Galaxia earlier, but also it was us working together that got us to this conclusion. Absolutely. So, again, I also assume that you have no conditions currently. Nope. So go ahead and mark potential. Excellent. And with that, I hope you all enjoyed yourselves. You will see us again 
the second Tuesday of every month here on Cyber Nation Uncensored. Masquerade of the Mighty masks a new generation live play. And remember that on Tuesdays, we wear masks. Cyber Nation Uncensored.